Good morning, and welcome to the allotment. What is it about the best laid plans? Well, between the weather and work and sewing and potting up at home, I've just been too busy for the March allotment tour. So now it's almost April and I've finally found a beautiful day and been able to take a couple of hours off from all the work at home to come down here and show you what's been happening. My partner has been very busy clearing out his, his herb bed. We had a mixture of herbs in here, some Mediterranean types and some that were just taking over the whole bed, especially the sage. So he took those two plants out, cleaned up the rest and well, it's a work in progress. But as you can see down here, we have something that's a bit lower. So he's replanting the whole thing making a new layout and hoping that it'll work out better this year. We still have some stuff growing in here. Not much has changed, but here, if you look, you can see the radishes coming up and in between the radishes, there's going to be carrots, I hope. And basically, it's supposed to be a bed for growing carrots, but we put the radishes in between to mark the rows because the carrots just take ages to come up. So we'll see how that does later on. The chives are doing great though. The tomato bed is still dormant, of course, waiting for the tomatoes to go in in about two months time. And this is what's left of the fava beans that we put in here in the fall. Unfortunately, the mice just absolutely adored those. And every time I came into the garden, I saw some of them dug up. So eventually I just gave up. And this is what's left. So we'll just leave these in here. Um, of course, we won't get much of a harvest from them. Maybe a couple of shoots to put in our salads. We'll get back to the greenhouse later on. These are all the potatoes I've planted so far. They're all first earlies and I've put them in in the past couple of days. I had a little helper. One of my nieces helped me plant them so there's no video footage of that. Two of the buckets are part of Erica's potato challenge from Erica's Little Welsh Garden. Um, and the rest are just several varieties that I'm trying out this year. Um, I may do a potato video later on because I still have the second early to go out and of course the main crop potatoes as well. Nothing much has changed here except that my daughter put in a sage plant yesterday. Yeah. This is absolutely great. The radicchio. I think I've harv harvested it twice and it keeps coming back. So that's perfect. And we only lost one of our radicchios to the frost, actually. There's another one down here that's not growing too well. Of course, we have tons of weeds in here that I just haven't gotten around to taking out. The spinach is growing very well. Uh, I think we'll probably harvest some of that um, for the weekend. And our fruit bushes are looking great. Gooseberries here. These are currants, black currants, and red currants here. This bed has some multi-sown beets in it that look like they, they're doing okay. They need some water though. It hasn't been raining for the past couple of days. And look, 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 we've started planting into the row beds. My daughter did this yesterday and it looks like everything survived the night. I checked the weather forecast and it looks like we won't have any frost at all for the next 10 days, night frosts. So I figured I'd put the kohlrabi out. And back there in front of the metal bed, maybe you can see, we also have more kohlrabi and some pak choy. Here's a closer look. They look like they're doing great. 
They are pretty frost hardy, but I didn't want to put them out if there was any chance of frost in the first couple of days, so they have time to grow their roots. This middle bed is supposed to keep the slugs out, except of course they burrow deep into the ground, so it's not 100%, but it does help a lot. It has one sad looking Cavallo Nero in there and one sad looking Savoy cabbage, which more or less survived the frost with some damages. Um, and all the rest of it is self-sown salad and borage. The salad, um, we grew in 2019 and then it um, didn't do well at all um, and then I put my foot down and said no we'll let it go to seed and see what happens and so now the whole bed is filled with the salad and I have no idea what kind it is what variety it is um, but it tastes really good and I've just transplanted some of those. I'll show you that in a minute. And here in the front, between the onions, I think, we have some borage coming up. And these come up with a vengeance. Uh, they self-seed all over the garden. And we love them though. And in about one or two weeks time, the bees will have lots of lovely blue blossoms. Here you can see the Cavallonero making little shoots that you can eat just as well. Here you can see the bed that I just planted the salad into that I took out of the slug deterrent bed and they really do look great. And in the back here I have some comfrey, Caucasian comfrey. Um, I bought one pot and divided it up because it was planted way too closely. We'll see how those do. I still need to water them in when I'm done with this video. And finally, we come to the greenhouse. I still have it in bubble wrap because we do still get cool nights. But I've um, opened up part of the bubble wrap that's near the window to let the heat out during the day because I can't come in every morning to open it up and every evening to close it again. So down here we have some Swiss chard, another mini pak choy, um, and some kohlrabi that I put in about a week ago or maybe two weeks. And here uh, there's a leaf celery I think I showed you in the previous tour. Um, and I've already taken out two or three plants that have come up next to it to give to family and friends. And what's doing really well back here are the salads, mostly endive. And of course, our five cauliflower plants that I hope have actually survived the frost and won't bolt on me. That risk um, is definitely there. But uh, if, they, if they do bolt, I guess we'll just eat the leaves instead. And finally, here's some sugar snap peas that I sowed yesterday. And a couple of white cabbage that are going to go out into the garden soon. Still a bit early for them. They're still a bit small. And some hyssop. These are actually these. Uh, this is just one sixth of what I bought in a pot at the garden center. Um, it was planted so densely I could have probably uh, made 10 pots, but I separated out some of them uh, into individual plants and left some of them together. But I'm sure they'll it, love having more space per plant. And my favorite sign of spring, the rhubarb is coming up. This is not the perfect spot for it and I will have to move it, but for this year I'm leaving it here. I hope it does better now that we've given it a bit more light. And I also hope that it will get enough of a harvest for at least one or two cakes.
and I almost forgot because it's so hard to film from the inside. This is the back of our shed and my partner built the structure for the raspberries just to tie them inside because they were growing over the path and they look great.